This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God, written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue the transfer of training with Book 3. In Chapter 3, this is Section 1. Time, Space and Personhood, Part 1 of 6. David This morning our friend was saying, I want it now. This would be a good time to go into the section, The Immediacy of Salvation, and examine the whole idea of whether you can really want it now and not have it. The only remaining problem that you have is that you see an interval between the time when you forgive and will receive the benefits of trusting in your brother. This but reflects the little you would keep between you and your brother, that you and he might be a little separate. For time and space are one illusion, which takes different forms. If it has been projected beyond your mind, you think of it as time. The nearer it is brought to where it is, the more you think of it in terms of space. Text, Chapter 26, Section 8 There are a lot of metaphysics to look at right there in that first paragraph. It kind of eases into it, but the last three sentences are the basis of everything we look at. They are zeroing in on the one remaining problem that you have. Everything is a thought in the mind. So every memory is just a thought. If it has been projected beyond your mind, you think of it as time. Memories are just thoughts about something that seems to have happened in the past. All those images that have been projected beyond one's own mind are thought of as time. As if I am a person in time and I have a private mind. Instead of seeing that all the circumstances and events that have ever happened in a personal past or in any past are in the mind. Julius Caesar, Cleopatra, Abraham Lincoln, Gandhi. They are all images of the wrong mind. When something seems to be beyond one's own personal private mind, it seems to be projected onto time. As if it has happened in the past or it will happen in the future. There is nothing that happens apart from me. When I say I am the universe, that is the deepest sense, that is in the deepest sense of the word, the universe of creation, God and His creation. There is no aspect of the cosmos that is apart from me in the sense of the right mind. It is a perspective that sees that the entire projection was made up. There is no ordering of any of the concepts and images. They are all equally made up. Without that ordering, there is no sense of being in the cosmos or of being a teeny little speck, a tiny part. There is more of a sense of the vastness of the idea that I dreamed this up. This is the dreamer of the dream analogy. In the dreamer of the dream experience, there is no sound, image, light or variation of light. There is nothing within the cosmos that is apart from one's self, so to speak. One is the dreamer of it all. Now for the second part. The nearer it is brought to where it is, the more you think of it in terms of space. You perceive yourself as a body 
or as a person in the world and you think of it as if the deceived mind has surrounded itself with the cosmos. The first thing it seems to have surrounded itself with in terms of space is a body. Then seemingly outside of that body there are other bodies, walls and furniture, trees and grass, sky above and earth below, moon and sun, planets and stars. It seems to have wrapped the whole cosmos around it, beginning with the body. The nearer it is brought to where it is, the more you think of it in terms of space. If you think of a projector, the closer you bring something to the projector, the more it is thought in terms of space. That is how it is described. Stars are described in terms of light years because they seem to be so far away from the projector that they start to be described in terms of time. Just like all those events that seemed to happen before or all those events that will happen in the future. Friend, at any rate, whether it is time or space, it is meant for distancing. And it is the same thing. It only sounds like something different. David, time and space are one illusion that take different forms. We can use the tree analogy again. All the branches come back to the trunk. You can look at time and space as the seeming branches of the trunk. But the ego is the ego and everything that is of the ego is the ego. Friend, no matter what you call it or how you conceive of it, David, or how many times it seems to have multiplied, talk about the ego belief system, it seems like it has oodles and oodles and oodles of beliefs. Friend, a billion times zero. David. Yes, but if the ego is zero, the ego is zero. There is a distance you would keep apart from your brother. And this space you perceive as time because you still believe you are external to him. Text Chapter 26, Section 8, Para 2 Do you see the idea of personhood in there? You would have to be, have a belief in personhood to see yourself as external to your brother. If your brother is a body or your brother is a person and you are a person, then you seem to be external to your brother. If you are a private mind and your brother seems to have a private mind, then your private mind seems to be external to your brother's private mind. This is what we keep looking at. From all these different angles, personhood and the idea of private minds are both made up and cannot be so. This makes trust impossible. Text chapter 26, section 8. You could say the subject-object split must make trust impossible. When the mind seemed to fall asleep, it began to believe in the ego. Now it had two opposite thought systems. Two thought systems that have no meeting point. That is where the intolerable sense of strain came in. The mind tried to dissociate from and forget about the light. It tried to spiral out away from the light so that it could keep the two thought systems apart. Because if they were ever brought together, it would be seen that they cannot coexist. One denies the other. The mind tries to hang on to the split and the separation. It tries to keep the darkness 
as if it can have an existence by itself apart from the light. Due to the intolerable strain of trying to hold on to both, the split and the cosmos were projected out rather than recognizing the two, that the two irreconcilable thought systems were in the mind. The split is seen as on the screen rather than in the mind. The mind identifies as a person and sees everything else as outside itself. This is the subject-object slip split. Now there is fear because the mind has done all this and in a sense it has tried to forget what it has done. It has tried to forget the way things it set up things but the Holy Spirit is a reminder that this cannot be forgotten. God cannot be forgotten. The mind still has the guilt and the strain but seems to have relieved itself with this projected cosmos. It seems to have loosened up the strain a bit, but it is really afraid of God. It has projected the fear out, so it seems that it is afraid of all these things in the world. It is a setup. It is a scam. The subject-object split has not resolved the conflict. The mind tried to forget the wholeness that it truly is and made up a concept of a whole person to replace it. Now it thinks it is a whole person separate from the cosmos. There is the subject-object split. The fear is maintained. Until the fear is found to be an unfounded hoax, the mind is in a fearful state, full of doubt. It is in a state of deception and lack of trust. It cannot trust anything because it does not know itself. This is why the split has to be seen as not on the screen. It is not a split between a person and another person or subject in an objective world. The split has to be seen in the mind for trust to be possible. Listening to the Holy Spirit would be the basis of trust and if one truly listened to the Holy Spirit, one would see that one is the dreamer of the dream. One is not a person or a little figure in the dream. End of part one of section one of chapter three in book three. We will continue with part two of six in tomorrow's recording.